production possibilities curve is a simple model of an economy. It uses a graph to illustrate the economic problem we face. The problem is that societies must deal with unlimited wants in the face of limited resources. It is also used to define several economic concepts that will be used throughout your study of economics. It can also show you how to construct and use an economic model. A model is a simplified framework that represents a complex process. Understanding how a model works helps you understand how a complex system works. A model can be used to shed light onto a particular aspect of behavior, in this case the need to allocate resources. We use five simplifying assumptions to construct this picture of an economic system. First, let's assume that our simple economy only produces two goods. Let's say sauerkraut and fart fans. Second, let's assume that the same resources are used to produce both. This is a valid assumption since all production requires land, labor, and capital. Third, assume that at any given time we have only a fixed amount of resources available to us and that the technology we use to transform our resources into finished products is also fixed. Fourth, we can also assume that we will use our resources as efficiently as possible. At one point in time, there is only one best way to do things, and we'll assume that that is the technique we use. And last, assume we will encounter diminishing returns or increasing costs. Things will get harder to make as we produce more of them. The production possibilities curve is a graph that depicts all the possible combinations of sauerkraut and fart fans that could be produced. Since our resources are limited and technology is fixed in the near term, our choices are limited. If we devoted all of our resources to sauerkraut production, we could produce a maximum amount of sauerkraut, but we'd have no fart fans. Conversely, if we devoted all of our resources into making just fart fans, we could produce this number of fans. But it's not all or nothing. We have choices. We can produce different combinations of sauerkraut and fart fans by transferring resources between the two. The curve is negatively sloped. Since both goods use the same resources and we have a finite amount of resources, producing more of one means giving up some of the other. However, the trade-off is not constant. Because people tend to use the best suited resources first, we will encounter diminishing returns as production increases. Our choices can be divided into three categories. Combinations below the curve are possible, but they would be inefficient options. Producing below the curve would mean we are not maximizing our production. We have enough resources to produce more. Since we face limited resources and technology is fixed in the short term, certain combinations are beyond our reach they are unattainable. Only those combinations that lie on the curve are both attainable and represent efficient use of resources. Why does rising production lead to increasing cost? Even though sauerkraut and fart fans are made from the same resources, not all resources are equally well suited to produce both. For instance, some land is better suited to growing cabbage that is used to make sauerkraut than to produce the ingredients needed to make fans, such as plastic and electric motors. Since people are generally rational, we tend to use the best resources first. For example, when we start out making fans, we will use the land and labor and tools best suited to the process. As we increase production of fans, we will need to use resources less well suited to fan production. Thus, the cost to produce each additional fan will increase. As an economy increases the production of one good, it will use progressively less productive resources, which means that it is incurring diminishing returns. This means that as fan production rises, we will need to give up larger amounts of sauerkraut to make more fans. How can we get more? By becoming more efficient or more productive. Getting more resources allows more production. Trading with other economies allows more specialization. 
Improvements in technology lower the cost of production. More efficient fan production frees up resources. We can use these resources to either make more sauerkraut, more fans, or more of both. The production possibilities curve is a model that illustrates the concept of scarcity and choice. As we said before, there's no such thing as a free lunch. All decisions entail costs. Increasing the output of anything means fewer resources are available to produce other things. The production possibilities curve illustrates why we need to make choices. While we always want more, we are faced with limited resources and limits to our ability to transform these resources into the things we want. All societies use an economic system to make these choices and allocate resources by deciding what to produce, how to produce it, and who will get it. Ideally, an economic system accomplishes three things. It picks the best combination of outputs. It determines the right mix of sauerkraut and fart fans. Second, it maximizes the output of those things by promoting efficiency. It prompts us to use our resources wisely. Lastly, it gives us the motivation to become more productive over time, to lower the cost of production, to free up resources, to allow us to make more of everything. In other words, to raise our standard of living. Mm -hmm.